Have you got the Strictly bug? It's is strictly it like this? Bug. Yeah. <laughs> it turns every, into the curse. That's every... another thing altogether. But... <laughs> Does it? <laughs> Only if you were on it, Piers. Well, of course. Yes. Um, no, I am absolutely loving it, and it's just been—it's been a lovely interlude, actually, because as you say, I'm, I'm doing some very serious work, and mm. um, we'll be pursuing that uh, next year. But this is a nice interlude, but it's also allowing me to talk about mental health for children in a way that perhaps I wouldn't have been able to before. So. You are. I mean, you're a serious news reader at the BBC, uh, Susanna. Obviously was doing the same when she did it as well. Charlotte, not so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm only kidding. So um, but what is it about you news readers when you're reading this serious stuff all day that makes you think, you know what I want to really do? I want to burst out in sequins <laughs> on a dance floor. Well, precisely dazzle that. the nation. Precisely that, because we're dealing with very serious issues the whole time. That is our world as journalists. But I'm loving it. And, and I always think, you know, if you're going to do something, then commit to it absolutely fully. So If I was... If my wife entered Strictly, A, I'd ban her... Yeah. because mm -hmm. of the curse, and B, I would be watching all this footage of you caressing some other guy, knowing you're training that closely for 10 hours a day. How did I know you going to go down Well, yes. because it's, it's strictly curse is a real thing, isn't it? Have you, how are you're you gonna... very physically it, intimate it, with someone is it all a day. Real, is it a real thing, or is it just statistically? See, I would call it marriage magic. You know my husband. I do. You need to have a word with him. How does he feel about it? You know, Mike, he's very, very cool about everything. Yeah. And, uh, Not a flicker of did, jealousy. He did say. He did say to me, if it was the, if the roles were reversed, I'm like, yeah, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how would you so, feel yeah. about him dancing with a hot dancer for ten hours a day? Seriously, yeah, we wouldn't happen. That's just it. <laughs> you would have so just, yeah. You know, my husband is very, very cool with it, and uh, and more to the point, loving the impact that it's having on his wife. Really? Oh, What's the yeah? Well, guess have a bit more. In, come on. No, then. it's in what early way? morning. Really. You said, I mean, you talked about magic. I mean, I'm, I'm, how, how have I got into this? Because <laughs> that's you what know, Piers is obsessed been with, with Morgan. You, told, when I'm you can't take a camel to an oasis and not give it a drink. <laughs> <laughs> You've teed us up here, so it's, had a, it, it's energised your marriage. Yes. Love this. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're bounding yeah. back I, home I, I after 10 I, hours training. I go, am. Come here, mate. You get fitter, you're more toned, you're flooded with endorphins. Exactly. This is the thing, and I think, going back, if I can, to yeah. mental health, <laughs> if that's all right with you, um, is that, in all seriousness, and I did a keynote mental health speech last week, and Ali Ash came with me because it was there's a lovely synergy to it, that if we're talking about getting our children away from social media, away from being online, actually, as I've now realised how addictive dance is very, very quickly, but the endorphin levels, it reduces cortisol, so it just makes you feel good to be alive and you're getting fit. What is not to love about it? Mm. So I'm, and in fact, I spoke to Darcy. She's going to do a documentary on mental health that's coming out in November, which is all related to mental health okay, and dance. So here's so my issue about this, not about taking mental health seriously. I absolutely think we should. But the more it seems to me that we've been talking about, say, anxiety in yeah. the public arena, and, it, and everyone's talking about it all the time, the more people seem to be identifying as suffering from anxiety. And there is a danger, I think, as a parent of four kids, that if you constantly talk about something... It makes people... you anxious. Well, but yeah, actually, yeah. yes, it yeah. can do. It so can I, do. I, I and think... I'll, I'll mm. cite you an example we were talking about this morning, which to me is just crackers, where Manchester University Students' Union have banned clapping yeah. from any events or lectures because it may trigger anxiety. When I read that, I think the country's gone mad. Yeah. And not in, not in a way that we can treat. No. I think the pendulum, doesn't it, it always sort of tends to go this way before it comes back to the middle. Clearly, listen, anxiety is stepping out on a dance floor in a dress that's sort of <laughs> no bigger than a doily. Mm. You know, but that's good anxiety. We need anxiety. If you look at brain development and brain science, which is where I'm coming from with, with what the work I'm doing with mental health, we need our brains to experience a level of anxiety mm -hmm. so that we, so can, we can learn overcome how it. to... Are exactly. we in danger of molly, molly coddling well, uh, com young people too? Much. In other words, yes. the, the snowflake generation have been basically brought up where they're offended by everything, they don't want to be have applause because it triggers... You know, all these things mm. which are, in my view, sort of cosseting them from the real world. The real world, as we all know, when we get into it, is a pretty it's tough anxiety. place. And that's what we should be doing. And, in fact, it's very interesting. So, with teenagers, and I've been having this conversation just outside with mothers of teens in the makeup room, mm. is that they do need a level... They need to be risk-taking. Yes. That is as good for their brain development. It's actually... It's an atavistic, it's an innate thing for them to and do. And understand it. failure we, and understand how to deal with we failure. We would all still be living in caves if people didn't go out and take risks and explore. Right. Mm. So, this is the point, and I do... I completely agree with you. We should be looking at what our teenagers need. We need to be guiding them towards good risk taking, positive risk taking, but they need to be risk taking for that prefrontal. But how do we teach kids develop? how to fail if every time they now mm. compete in 
sport in many schools. They all get participation prizes. We encourage prizes. Do you know what I do with my daughter? And actually, this came from Mike. Mm. And he read about a female entrepreneur. You can ask Lord Sugar about it. She, her dad, every week when she came home, he would sit her down and say, right, what have you failed at today? Mm. And she would be, you know... And he'd say, right, you're not trying hard enough. I need you to fail. And he paid her for every failure that she Why? came home with. Why what? Why, Why would, would you pay do that? Her? Because he's rewarding her. What he's saying... Why are you rewarding failure? Because failure because, builds success. Because you're, if you're trying it, you're not afraid to try it. If you think... It's like, you know, yeah. sort of with the light bulb. If you're, if you're doing something enough, but then I you're think, no longer okay, afraid. But I, I think obviously, the point is... I, I, if you I, I, assume, I understand you're, that, well, if I explain that problem. No, well, yes, I, but I don't, I don't agree with it. And here's why I don't agree with why, it. Why would you not agree I don't with it? It's all about winning. It agrees with your point. To me, this country has got away from celebrating winning No, 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 you're missing my point. What he's saying is... I get it, I get the point. When your children are young, yeah. If you can say to them, failure is not something to be afraid of. We yeah. should be doing it. You have to fail to succeed. Clemency said to me, that nasty man on the end was mean to you. And I said, Clemency, I've never danced before. That's constructive. I want yeah. to show her, actually, that there is... It's OK to fail because you build on yeah. that. And also, remember Churchill said that success is going from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Yeah, but he yeah. was unbelievably successful. I mean, I, I just think that... I don't know. He this had whole, to fail first. The culture seems to be to be moving to a place which is, I think, bad for the country, where genuinely being competitive. You're a competitive person. Yeah. These two, my God, I mean, when they competed in these things, it's ruthless, right? But I like that, because why would you enter yeah. anything and not want to win? Of course we should. If you, if you come up short, you come up short. Yeah. But give it everything you've got. All I've ever said to my kids is, I will only have a go at them if I see them participating in anything competitive yeah. where they haven't tried their and best. And that's where, that's if it. we start young by saying there is nothing to be afraid of, failure is mm. fine because you build on it. Mm. And actually, it helps you so that when you're older, you're not afraid but to them, try. See, but giving them a financial reward for failure, I, I, what I used to give them was bread and water for a week. Yeah. And it was amazing how that used to be. And a, and a Just a joke, people. A for your, I've triggered eye. anxiety by that. Uh, no, I don't I, think we saw enough of you dancing, frankly. I don't that. think we... Can I just talk about this really quickly? Yes, I'd you like can. all schools to be... All schools, secondary schools, are going to be given this before World Mental Health Day, and it's yep. got some amazing resources in here. Yeah. It's talking about stress buckets, how parents can help their children. What's a stress bucket? A stress bucket is when kids... It's what I have under the desk every morning. Yeah, yeah. There we are. Yeah. This is under a stress bucket. When there's things that make you feel stressed, Think yeah. you need to talk about, bucket. and actually, then you have a. The point of a parent and a, and a and a guardian is to help you then a child to deal with that to get rid of it, so that when yeah. they're older, they don't have the anxiety that you're talking about with Manchester okay. University. Where's your